Hey, I'll start painting. Just need to find the right brush first. Once again, I have no idea if this is even on. <laughs> Maybe at some point I will figure out. I had an idea for a brush that I wanted to use. Maybe it was this paw print. Is it? This is probably good enough. Hey, at least there's somebody on the chat. Um, last time that I did the stream, there was a problem with uh, the chat. It didn't show up after the stream was done. And I was looking at the settings and I don't see anywhere a setting where you can keep the chat or not keep the chat. Wow, wrong layer. So I don't know what's up with that. I just noticed that it's weird that if I'm talking to the chat and then people can't actually see the chat. Maybe it's just a YouTube bug or something. It's kind of strange to talk with these headphones on, but if you're doing a stream, apparently you can't use uh, Bluetooth devices with um, OBS for some reason. I'm gonna set it as a, this as a multiply layer since there was that um, white brush stroke. I'm gonna lock it so that I don't accidentally paint on it. Oh, Ghostly Games has bought an iPad and Apple Pencil. I hope you like painting with it. To me it seems so crazy that this is uh, so much cheaper of a device and there's a super expensive Cintiq like on the floor behind this chair. <laughs> that I am not motivated to even plug into the PC. But it's like three times the money of this whole setup. I was thinking about it and I think the most important thing is this like rotating feature because that speeds up my own workflow so much that to me it's kind of a deal breaker that you can't do that as quickly in other programs. Hey, I got this question again, at what age did you begin drawing? And this is a question that pretty much like comes in every live stream and I don't know how to answer this question to be honest because it seems like th that this question somehow I don't know if this is what you mean but to me it sounds like you assume that I just someday decided that I am going to become an artist and I'm gonna start painting and drawing this didn't happen to me at any point in my life I have been pretty much painting all my life always and it would be weird to say that I started when I was six or I started when I was four because obviously you're not even a real person at that age so you can make those sort of decisions when you're a kid so I was young and I have been painting I don't know three decades now Yeah, about Patreon. I am now in talks with the tax office to find out how that stuff works or if it's even a possibility for me. Uh, scary times. So a little context for everybody who is not following me on Twitter. I have now no job. So I have to figure out if I'm gonna keep doing this YouTube videos or just like focus on getting a job but one of those two things has to happen if I, and in any case I have to figure out a way to support myself through this. But I have some time so I don't need to make that decision right away. 
there's nothing dramatic, by the way, bit behind me losing my job. The whole department was cut off, like even the managers and the bosses, so it's just uh, the current financial situation. But obviously, like having this channel, like <sighs> the situation has made me kind of like count, like how much am I losing money, and this is like hundreds of euros that I am spending on this channel each month. Just the cost of editing software and audio stuff. I was thinking about maybe switching to DaVinci Resolve, but then I figured that. I am going to need like audio editing software that I can use to edit music and stuff. That's very important for the type of videos that I do. And since I have to pay for that too, might as well have the whole Adobe package for all the other stuff. How do you get your inspiration? Well, I guess this is the second painting of these. Uh, carry on package, but I guess this just comes from my childhood of spending so much of my time in the airports and flying around the world. I always found airports kind of like exciting place to be in. And especially those conveyor belts that package gets to go on. I thought that was super exciting. I always wanted to go on one. <laughs> I'm not in like a terrible rush to get a new job because it's not like my drawing ability is gonna go anywhere in a few months. Especially since I'm probably painting more than less <laughs> when I'm just painting for myself and freelance clients. Oh! Hey, baby. Uh, and just to get back to Phoebe's uh, question about crowdfunding, that's not a possibility for me here in Finland. So if I do Patreon, it has to be a service that I have content, like for example, educational material and stuff. How do you get yourself out of a creative block? Um, I will let you know once I experience one and if I get out of it. <laughs> I haven't had a creative block. I'm tired sometimes and I need to rest, but I don't go calling that a creative block. It's, it seems like a different thing. What I especially love about your art is that it starts off so messy and then just the biggest glow up. Well, <laughs> let's see where this goes. <laughs> Maybe nowhere. I guess that's the, like, the scariest part about live streams. Like, you don't know where the painting is gonna go. And if there are people watching, yeah, you kind of have to just like deal with it. Now I'm gonna put the headphones on because I love this song so much. Maybe you can publish a book of your artwork, it will be a nice income. Uh, books are a huge, huge investment. And by investment, it really is uh, a gamble to know if it will work out. I think a book would be fun to do at some point. 
but I definitely don't have the information to handle the logistics right now. Or like financial safety because it might be a disaster and you have to take into account that like if it doesn't sell you will have spent tens of thousands of euros on something that you will still have to store somehow or get rid of. Maybe they could work better the other way around, so that this is like yellow bag. Because I have a big boxy yellow bag like this, and like it. I bought it for the trip that I went to Bangkok and... Bang! There was some other country too that I have now forgotten. Cambodia <laughs> during Christmas last year. I took so much footage there and I was always intending to make a video out of it but just ne never got around to it. But now that I have this like better camera, I don't know if it would be okay to like edit uh, lesser quality footage. I'm sure that nobody actually cares about these sort of like technical details. Hey Mikko, how do you feel about being such a huge inspiration for most of us? <laughs> this is going to make me plus. I'm glad that I have the colored lights. <laughs> uh, like personal example, I recently found what I want to pursue because concept art for backgrounds. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think concept art is a awesome job and I highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it for the time that I enjoyed it, but I don't know if I would like to do games more. It's just, uh, now I have a bit more creative uh, things that I need to get done. I mean, I'm more aware of like how I spend my time now and I guess that's one of the considerations that even though all of this uh, social media and like having a YouTube channel and that stuff. By the way, thank you Hahahi for the uh, $5 shout. Um, what I was I saying? I completely lost my train of thought. It's hard to speak while you're listening to music uh, on headphones. So, uh, I'm now more aware that like if I spend let's say eight hours a day at work and there's one hour of train ride and one hour of train ride back. That's a lot of time out of your day. And if you dedicate all of that to work, which might makes you money and that is of course necessary to survive in life, then the art won't get done. So of course money is important. Like I need money to be able to pay for this mortgage and stuff but it's not everything and I've noticed that even if I make less money but if I am able to make the situation into something where I can support myself and just make the paintings that I've always wanted to make that it has value in itself too so if I make a UI design for some like graphic design agency it's not going to be fulfilling for me in the same way that I'm like doing my life's work. I wish that more companies were open to this sort of like part-time working because here in Finland this sort of like part-time week work is usually considered as something that like is rewarded to long-term employees so that they don't burn out or that they can recover from their burnout but it's not considered as something that people get hired for part-time work. Because if I could get a job from some nice place for like 
four days a week and just make less money, I think that would be ideal for me in the situation and then I wouldn't have to quit doing YouTube videos. Hey Mikko, first time I caught a live stream live, congrats on 50k, thank you. And I wanted to make this live stream even though I have gone over the 50k line a few uh, days ago, but because I am simultaneously having almost the same amount of followers on Instagram as I have here on YouTube, and I think that is awesome. I never thought that YouTube would catch up to me on Instagram, but it looks like YouTube is gonna go past my Instagram following at some point. And I, I'm very grateful for all of you for being here to make that happen. I just remember when I started doing these videos and I think my first upload got like less than 30 views. <laughs> and that was the situation for months and months. And I think in those situations you really have to have like, like true grit to not quit. And I'm pretty proud of myself for not quitting. Because like, I sure felt like it's not going anywhere. But I've heard from many YouTubers that their first years were like completely flatlining for a really long time. And I have always find there's like a certain type of comfort in having a smaller audience because then you can like learn in safety. Now, I know that everybody wants to kind of like blow up as quickly as possible, but there is a benefit to like being able to like develop your skills and develop your editing or painting if you have a Instagram following. And then just do those mistakes when you have a smaller audience, because they are going to be like much more harsh to recover from when you have more followers. When it comes to Instagram, I feel a lot of pressure lately and lose my want to post and motivation to illustrate. Any tips on how to stop thinking seriously of it? Well, you are thinking about the outcome. If you saw my previous video, I think you shouldn't time travel to the future when the piece is done and when you're posting it. You should be there and when you're painting it. And maybe it's just like assume that like everybody is going to hate your painting uh, or what is more likely and more realistic. Nobody cares. Not a single cent about your art at all. Like if you can accept that as a truth, then what's there to lose? Just like post your picture and like put it out there. Like just imagine that I have been doing concept art for over 10 years when I started my Instagram account and my first illustrations were just like ink drawings without sketching, just like random doodles. And on my work hours, I was doing all these like uh, illustrations for Sony for E3 and stuff for like millions of people to see. So that was like a pretty drastic jump from like caring a lot about what people think because obviously I wanted to like paint the company in the best possible light and then just like I don't care anymore like if you hate this that's fine but I'm going to enjoy this and that was the like the best decision of my life and I don't think there has ever been a time when I have enjoyed making art as much as when I started Instagram and I just didn't care at all what people think and that allowed me to kind of develop a lot more styles. I've already had learned quite many styles because all the games that I have worked on have been in different styles. But when I started doing more art and just like not censoring any single pieces, I just posted absolutely everything that I made. It just made me grow artistically a lot faster because I was uh, not afraid to try new things even if they fail.
I haven't been following you for a long time. Do you paint exclusively in Procreate? Um, I sometimes work with Photoshop. I don't hate Photoshop. I have Photoshop. I'm paying for Photoshop license and I'm paying for other Adobe products that I use a lot more. I The only audio software that I know how to use is Audition and I pay monthly sub for that. Uh, all of my new videos are edited in Premiere Pro, also a subscription that I pay for. But for painting, I just love having this because it's so easy to carry around and after I bought iPad I have been painting like 10 times more just because at one point it felt like when I put the PC on and sit at a desk like this basically it felt like work and I didn't want art to feel like work to me anymore and I painted absolutely everywhere like whenever I leave the house and I do mean whenever I leave the house to go anywhere I always always take my iPad with me and nine times out of ten I get some painting done even if it's few minutes on a bus or train and yes you can paint on a bus I should be faster at this painting by the way <laughs> Because it's wasting so much time. So this is the floor. And I'm gonna leave it as its own layer because it's going to be easier to use this as a clipping mask later when I do all the reflections. But it's going to be a glossy airport floor, so... I'm gonna pay attention to that later when I have all the reflection sources. By the way, the last video that I have been editing this morning and yesterday is that on Monday I went to this lake. Oh, actually, this is terrible. <laughs> uh, I'll look. Yeah. Okay, don't worry about it. It's going to look terrible for a moment. I went to a lake with the iPad and I did like plain air painting at the lake. And the video is going to be different. I don't know how you feel about it. It's like has like a vloggy elements, but the painting part is done with like by screen recording as the reflection was too bright for a screen recording with a camera. But I always love implementing these shots of nature from Finland just because, I don't know, I sometimes I just see some parts of nature and I think like I couldn't do a better painting, like this is beautiful enough already. So it was fun to put together the video. There's still a bit to go, but I think it was fun to edit. I love the fact that not all videos are the same. Actually, uh, this direction would work better since they are kind of going the opposite way so that there is this sort of two different directions. So these characters are going this way, so it makes sense for the reflections to be going this way. So it gives this sort of like composition a bit more uh, movement for the eye. But I'm right-handed, so I guessed it wrong <laughs> the first time that I painted it. Okay, uh, I need to cut out these elements and put them on a layer above. This is so badly organized. This doesn't have to be precise because I can just get rid of the rest. No, it's the wrong layer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now that makes sense. Hey Nico, congratulations on the 50k. Thank you, Marks. Thank you, Anzika, for the 
subscription. <laughs> it helps. Every everyone helps. Honestly, I had like so small uh, expectations for this whole channel when I started. I just thought like, who's gonna like subscribe to a Finnish art, digital artist on the internet when there's like so many great um, art tubers already on YouTube. So I thought that like, there's probably no chance that this is going to work, but I'm gonna try anyway. It's just what is there to lose. And I'm glad that I had that attitude and not just not doing it. But it was close. Hey, maybe it could be night and these are kind of like reflections on the window behind. Because that already looks pretty okay ish. Yes, this is what I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna put the floor in front. That makes sense. I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker with curves. Maybe there could be some lights behind that show crew. I was thinking of putting this like a uh, sign here. These are all square shapes so that they are easy to um, recycle. Actually smart shape here would be better because I, then I could get automatically the rounded edges. So um, this wasn't a good idea. I'm gonna take the graphic uh, brush to make this happen. No. <laughs> I'm gonna stick to my principles. Okay. overlaps. Why can I not feel it? Ah, oh, it's open shape. I love the blueberry frost, but same. Uh, I like the blueberry frost too. What was the one that I used for the previous one? Uh, for the painting that I did uh, in this outdoors experiment, I used the um, bear brush. And bear brush is really good for when you want to have most of the elements on the same layer. And the reason for that is because uh, I'm gonna set it as a magnet so that I can see that it's aligned. Since this is an airport sign, it shouldn't be levitating offset to the other piece. I just don't want these two corners here to overlap, so that's why I put it higher than in my sketch. Yeah, so the bear brush, when you use it in a painting that has most elements in the same layer, it kind of mixes colors. So that's why I think it was great for this sort of like plain air painting session. Because I use that sort of like mixing functionality a lot in that case. I probably shouldn't do these beams right now because there's still so many layers that I need to have for all of this to work. I'm gonna work on this um, background thing first a bit. I'm setting this as a clipping mask, multiply, and I'm gonna make a really cheap shadow out of this, kind of like fake ambient occlusion. To the lower corner here, like a sliver. Then I need to unlock it. And go simpler 
So because the light is bouncing less in corners, that's why the corners usually have these shadows. And those are usually the most boring shadows that don't have a lot of saturation in them. But never do black shadows. This I learned from my own art teachers. They were very intent on mixing all colors with colors. Hey Mikko, uh, appreciation from India, really love your teachings. Oh, hey to India. <laughs> where, where in India are you? Oh, from all over the world, people are tuning in. I saw that in my previous video, Somebody said that like I don't always resonate with like all of your paintings, but this really like hits home with me. And I want to say that like that's like fine. I completely understand that because I like doing many different styles, and I I'm not like I get it. I'm not expecting everybody to like all of the styles that I do. Uh, I only like ask for people not to kind of push me into one single style because. Having my own freedom to do like different types of paintings, that's something that I really enjoy. And of course, because you have lived your own life and you have your own preferences, that it's completely normal that you don't like all of my stuff. So I, I understand it. I am from Odisha. Whether is that in south of India or north? It's not a place in the India where I have been in. I feel like everyone should try many art styles. Hansika world said. I kind of agree. I think, especially with social media, people are so obsessed with branding and your brand isn't the style that you use or Wow. Somebody's. There's some video widget that is saying. There's a uh, setting that is uh, saying on my stream that check video resolution. Current resolution is not optimal. Now it went away. I hope that's not dangerous. Am I supposed to keep monitoring all of that stuff while I'm painting? That's a lot to take in. Hello from Oregon, USA. I hope you guys are doing better. Scary times there. I think following the situation, I was in Oregon in Portland a few years ago and that was like probably my favorite location on the whole trip. San Francisco of course was amazing, but Portland was really memorable for some reason. Maybe it was this like... Uh, The resolution thing, maybe it's about the stream. Like how quickly it's uploading stuff. I don't know. There are so many technical details involved in streaming that it's really intimidating. Oh, I'm gonna do these uh, highlights to the same direction as before with the wall for the same reason. So that there is this like zigzag composition happening. I'm gonna 
use this same layer uh, as a highlight for cheapness reason. And if you just tap off the selection, then you can move the selection to one pixel to that direction where you tap. So that's where these noises are coming from. Whoa, whoa. Not like that. Okay. Now I have like small edges. Actually, does it make sense to see the upside? No, oh, it's fine. I don't have time to get fancy with it. I think that the technology where it is at this point, we are not that far away from having this sort of like hand luggage that could walk on its own to the gate and you wouldn't have to like worry about it. I think it would be awesome to go to the airport and see everyone's luggage running around on the ground like dogs. I mean, is it more difficult? technology than drones are at this point. I don't think it is. It seems like I disconnected just now. It's about the stream resolution. I don't know if I can change it. I wonder if I can change it on the fly. change it on the fly, sorry. I think maybe I should put at least Wi-Fi off from my phone. Much love from Caribbean. Hope I get into my game design program. Wish me luck guys. Good luck. That sounds like really fun. There wasn't like any game studies when I was that age. But I have taught in like um, video game schools, concept art. Teaching concept art isn't like that different than teaching just normal uh, art and painting. It's just the same rules apply that once you learn how to construct an image and to direct the attention of the viewer, then those skills are going to be uh, constantly needed for when you are designing visuals for a video game. Especially since I did a lot of Twitch shooters, so sometimes you have less than split second to read what you're seeing, so like processing information is really important. Like those are really fun problems to solve for me.
Well, I feel like I've been like in the presence of the Pope. Uh, somebody attacked me in a post in a Twitter thread, and in that same post, like Lois was tagged, and now Lois responded to that thread. <laughs> What was my parents' opinion about me doing art? Hmm. Encouraging and understandably a bit worried. I'm sorry, I don't... <laughs> I don't feel like... Talking about my parents, I'll explain that some someday. Maybe this bag should have a yellow handle, so they are somehow. Together. I should get rid of the line art layer OST so that I don't rely on it too much because I actually have to explain the shapes with the color and not with line. Pretty good parents. And I understand that not everybody is that lucky. So it was pretty clear that I wanted to be an artist always. So it didn't come to them as a surprise at any point. You know what I said about how long I've been making art. Like as long as I remember. I wonder how long I've been painting at this point. I'm sure that there's a timer on this YouTube thingy somewhere. It's saying the same thing about uh, resolution again. Damn it. Well, at least now I have learned that I will be doing 720p next time. I 
on what kind of a buckle should this have, some kind of a desaturated metal maybe. I mean it's kind of a trashy bag. I just wanted the bag to have a design that made it seem like it's understandable that it's not behaving correctly on an airport. on their own layer so that I can work on the other stuff. Can you tell that I'm thinking of getting a dog? <laughs> There's so much pressure into trying to get a dog. Everybody wants one at this moment when they are stuck at home. That's really my priority. I want to have a dog more than I want to have a job. <laughs> Seam where it's going. I got a little bit more resolution would help. So I'm gonna try to pump that up a little bit. Canvas size, where is it? I'm allergic to cats, so no cat. Also, cats aren't dogs, so no. I, when I was younger, I had a Newfoundland dog, but I'm definitely not gonna get a dog that big again. Also, that's the reason why I want to, or like to paint so many bears. They remind me of my dog. It was big and lazy and chunky. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this bag, like the base frame, just maybe legs. And 
him to beat your back. Has joints on the legs for more articulation because it's a taller bag. I think this bag needs a bit more balancing support and agility. I find it's easier to always paint with light on dark instead of the other way around. But I know that this is a personal preference and I know plenty of artists that like to start on a completely white layer. I think that's fine if it's a choice, but I wouldn't recommend that for a beginner artists because it can lead to like very washed out colors. No rule is set in stone, it's just when you're starting out you don't want to fight every type of like uh, difficulty when it comes to painting, just the basic ones first. You can always make it more difficult for yourself later in life. Hey Martti Minkkinen! It's not sushi, it's a bat. <laughs> can do very like exaggerated shadows for this first. If I want to do more, I can always do darker color layer so that I don't destroy the shadows and I can add more definition if I need it. But for now, I think that's pretty explanatory. I think with some highlights that's gonna work. And the little arms. base for the arms and then call the fingers separately on top. Same for this arm. I think it's holding the flight tickets. Because this is like a parent luggage thing. You know, one of those parent luggage. I like the fact that dogs, uh, somebody saying Seona Smith, depends if you want companionship, cats are very much take it or leave it creatures, they like to suit themselves. I'm also allergic to cats, dogs follow you everywhere, they love to be your friend, this is why I like dogs. Also because it's the only option for me, since I am allergic cats. I'm gonna do like a small hint of reflection on this side of the bag. Same here.
del fingers. I really don't need this many layers, but just having these alpha locks speeds up things. Because with these live streams, it really is a game of speed mostly. These are speed paintings, not my normal paintings. are a normal part of the bag now. That's great, Marty. Please call it digital painting. <laughs> Digipirtaminen is like scraping my ears, but call it whatever. Just do it. It's fun. legs I'm gonna move them actually I'm gonna keep them here and just crunch them all together and then work on the big bag so that I have both of the main elements. Yes, adopting an animal is a lot of 
responsibility. That's why I haven't done it in so long. Even though I had a dog and I loved it very much, I still remember how much work it is to have a dog. You have to kind of put it as a priority in your schedule, no matter what happens. I know everybody keeps saying this, but it's impossible to, for somebody who hasn't had a dog before to understand just how much work it is. The suitcase is gonna miss the flight in the smaller suitcase or handbag is not. I'm gonna focus in a few minutes. I put a placement for a zipper to this side of the bag so that it could potentially look like an ear or earring. The massive zipper. I like zippers. Actually, this is starting to look a lot like my bag, except that my bag is completely yellow. I'm gonna do a clipping mask to these tickets and then set it as an overlay and then do some red stripes to make them look like way more official. figure out these two layers because there's a smaller pocket on this bigger bag maybe for like laptop or some papers no actually not laptop because if you put a laptop here it will get crushed when somebody throws it Sebastian Waldron, if you can see my message, can you say that you can? Like anyone here that can see, yes. As far as I'm aware, at least the chat is not affected by my uh, streaming hiccups that are due to the resolution. That is fixable. I will stream next time in 720p and that will completely fix it, I think. Obed Ramirez. Hi Mikko. Hi Obed. I don't know how to pronounce your name, sorry. <laughs> By the way, I definitely don't need to have this drawing guide on all the time. I will only need it if I want to do some seams on the floor in the end.
but right now I have so much to go with these bag details that I really need to like hustle with it. There's really no way to kind of uh, scope out how long a painting is going to take in advance. It's just gonna take what it takes. So I have time limitations for these live streams, but I'm not gonna like hold myself to cre creating the entire piece. It's just like I want to get to a stage where the piece is mostly done. So when I do like for example polishing or color editing, it's not going to completely change the painting into something else. And usually, like I said previously in these live streams, like this is definitely is not a great situation to do color editing. Even though color editing is super important, I do need those like few days in between painting and doing the color edit to like have enough distance of time to see how to push the colors better. Just a few hours sometimes is enough, but right away changing from painting to editing would not make sense and I wouldn't recommend it. Another one of the same questions of how I come up with ideas is that I just don't say no to an idea when it comes to me. If you keep doing that and like keep posting all of your art that you do, then you will have more ideas. It's like a muscle. But if you keep thinking that like this is a too difficult idea for my skills or this is not cool enough of an idea to post on my feed, then the ideas won't come either. Like you can't have it both ways have to put yourself kind of out there for the risk and then the ideas will come. And I do mean that this will probably take you years once you start doing it and you just keep painting more and more. Eventually it will get easier. I don't expect that change to happen within the first hundred paintings. Patience is the biggest problem with beginning artists. And I don't mean details, just spending time with the painting. I mean, there are so many art galleries that you can post your art for free. There's no excuse for not having one. Also, it might seem like it doesn't make a difference when nobody is following you, but trust me, in eight years, if you have started today, you will appreciate it eight years from now. Because you, if that's something that you want to keep doing, and maybe get some commissions someday. No matter how good of a painter you are, if you just like show up to Instagram and are like, or art station, here's my art, it's pretty likely that nobody will care because you haven't built that <laughs> uh, following. Just group resistance.
Yellow is a hard color. It changes so much when you try different values for it. You'd be surprised how many people I have seen come to a concept art class that I am teaching and when I ask them that if they have an online gallery that they don't raise their hands, it's pretty shocking. <laughs> and the class is, especially when I was teaching in Metropolia a few years when, when they asked me to teach there. Uh, that class was specifically geared towards uh, concept art and for art students. So for that type of a student who could have an online gallery of any kind, it's just like mind-boggling. <laughs> it's like, why? I honestly thought that as a teacher, is there any way that I can force them to do it? <laughs> like legally, is that something that I could be allowed to do? Mikko, is there a chance for a pixel art live stream? Uh, Rafael Franco is asking. And yes, this almost was a pixel art live stream. But then the idea that I had for it, uh, I thought that it might take too long to be a live stream. So I'm probably going to do that idea, but I'm going to have to have some like base stuff for it before I start the live stream, otherwise it won't be finished. During the live stream. At least not to a point that would be satisfying for the viewers. Yes, it do up do handle for this bag. Maybe it's a Swedish bag, who knows? I've heard that there's a way that like people can get custom uh, chat emojis 
for these live stream chats uh, in this uh, YouTube memberships service, but I'm not sure if that makes sense because it's not available to all countries for some reason. So if I can do a Patreon someday, then I wouldn't want to like have the trouble of like keeping up both and especially if YouTube membership is only for part of the crowd then it would be a lot of effort for a smaller crowd see this handle at all. <laughs> Maybe this was a terrible idea. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> not happy with that. What if there is a poster of some kind on the glass behind? Maybe this could work. this one and then do a multiply of this and then adjust the curves so that it doesn't destroy all of the highlights. to maybe think about the signs after the stream is over, but I was already thinking about what to put there, and text is always difficult, because when you have characters, I mean letters, in your illustration, they always gather a lot of attention. So... That those can be done in a certain way, but it, it's a problem that needs to be addressed somehow. There's also the option of like doing just something graphic. Actually, this is surprisingly okay. Okay. I'm just gonna keep that <laughs> as it is now. What I actually like about these live streams is that you can't get too fuzzy with small things because it's just painting won't get done otherwise. Maybe it's one of those like sturdy handles that you can like pull out and use the bag with wheels. Maybe there are wheels somewhere that come out in a different mode. And 
now I can focus on the zipper. That's enough for Zipper Madness. I wish I could like recycle this part for the other Zipper as well. For here, I don't know if I can make it fit. Warp to the rescue. The most useful tool in any software ever. It's going to be the name of my autobiography how I warped everything. It's not as much in shadow, so I'm gonna adjust the curves. Get a bit more light in there. it has all of this yellow canvas surrounding it so it should reflect that a bit There's still so much. Oh, try not to have a panic attack while painting so fast. It's even if I'm like not too worried about the live stream and when it's not getting cut off by the resolution. Who's the track? Bye. I can check some wave. Now 
just to make myself feel better about things. I'm gonna uh, try and maybe recycle these um, corner pads. are definitely something that I can clean up later, but they're not gonna make a big difference to the visual impact, so I'm gonna try to balance my time with the stuff that actually makes a difference, because if I just sit here and polish like 30 pixels area, that's not going to be fun for anybody, so it's not important. Duplicating these legs for a separate um, reflection. Same for the bag. And then putting them on top of the floor. For that I'm going to need the perspective grid soon, but I'm gonna make the texture first. I think doing these textures is always kind of a relaxing part of the process. Also, it's always fun in the live stream when people freak out when I'm doing this. The 
data goes to control of my like, Apple Pencil. Yes. It's not connecting. Oh my god, this has never happened before. <laughs> what can I do about this? Bluetooth and print again. But this is a complete disaster. I don't know what am I supposed to do. I lost my Apple Pencil connection. <laughs> Sorry guys, this is terrible. recognizing that the Apple Pencil is there, but it's not connecting. That has never happened to me before. I wonder why that is. It, ha it showed that it had like 86% battery to... I hope it doesn't happen again. Anyway, here's the floor texture. I'm gonna do one more and then flip it. And then set it as a darker version. And for this I'm gonna need to see the drawing guide. Now that I have this layer, I'm gonna go back to the floor layer. I think it's this one. And then in three form mode, I'm gonna align these edges with the perspective grid. I think it's the technical difficulties that are the most scary part because I'm most afraid of like something happening that I cannot fix. That might be like easy to fix if I just knew how. But there's simply no way to prepare for absolutely everything. I 
kind of like the way that it is. And then I'm gonna do a few like just very simple scenes to sell the perspective of the floor. And for this I'm gonna put the drawing assistant on. That's pretty much it. I accidentally made a um, layer crook. I hate it when that happens because in Procreate, for some reason, I have completely ditched using layer crooks for pretty much anything. I just find that they make moving around the layers more of a hassle, and then it's much easier to lose where your layer is in the group. So when possible, I just try not to have them at all. Now for the window, I think some seams would be also okay, but maybe I should do like the beams for those levitating weird beams first. Actually, I can probably just like recycle this in a cheap way. And just make beams out of these. see that it's aligned. Now I can see that these billboards uh, are not uh, symmetrical, but who cares. Now if that made it worse, I would just fix the shadow.
I think the um, microphone might be off. Sorry. Or I could just put more gain on this. Is that better? I don't know if I can adjust the um, music. Filter. There's a limiter to it. Uh, this is my audio limiter. Okay. Now that should be a bit quieter for the music. <laughs> when you know what an uh, audio limiter is, then I think that that's already pretty hardcore <laughs> video editing stuff. <laughs> so if the um, drawing guide is showing that the perspective is going like this, mm, I'm gonna just try something and see if this works. So I'm doing a few lights. Like this. They are actually they are not aligned to the grid at all. <laughs> I forgot to put the drawing assist on. Anyway, they're close enough. No reason to get fuzzy over it. Okay. And then I'll duplicate that and put it on as a um, Green or additive, we do additive. And for this, I'm gonna do a Gaussian blur. Twice. give us a hint of what the airport is looking like because it's night it's reflecting from the window and these clothes I'm going to use as a recycled way to show where the seams of the window are happening Half of this I'm gonna take out with a hard selection. And then, then have just another seam like this somewhere here. Uh, can I ask a newbie question? Shiona Smith says, how does adjusting the curves help your painting? Seen you do it a few times. Um, it helps by finding the right colors and sometimes I just feel like I need a bit more contrast, multiple reasons really, but mostly it's just finding the right colors because it's a really fast way to cycle through different options. Okay, I have about 15 minutes of like official time before I really need to like start shutting this whole operation down. So what is the most uh, pressing issue here? Maybe the signs because they really do need something. 
Oof. Okay. One thing that the signs also do need is uh, to be present in this reflection. It's just blocking some of those lights. Wow. Somebody's at the door. I think I'm waiting a package, <laughs> so oh, this this live stream has just been like <sighs> everything possible that can go in a live stream that can go wrong has gone wrong. Oh, <laughs> somehow I need to not think about it too much and just keep on with the painting. I think there's a package that is coming for shoes. Really sorry for everybody who is just tuning in for the first time in this live stream and seeing all of this. <laughs> it's not normally like this. Okay, at least I got the package. It's shoes for my boyfriend. It would have been <laughs> so much worse if I had missed receiving the shoes, so. I want to do a graphic airplane here. Just gonna delete all of that stuff. <laughs> Actually, this first thingy needs help. I'm pretty happy with the attitude of these bags. I think it works. 
I don't think that sentence makes any sense, but in my in my world view, it makes sense considering what these bags are. Ata Mikisa, Mikko, how are you today? I was fine, but this live stream is <laughs> complete mess. So there's a bit more stress <laughs> than I anticipated, but I'm fine, I guess. I'm alive. Maybe I should have just like continued editing the video and published that one of the vloggy thingy. And it all would have been fine. But no, I had to get fancy with it and think that I can do a live stream too. Yeah. Actually, green handle would be nice for this bag. Or whatever color this is. Not green. I think the bottoms of these like handbag paws have these sort of like rubber things, otherwise they will make up just too much noises when they are running around the airport. I really think that this brush, I'm gonna make a temporary duplicate and make a quick edit for this, because for this specific painting I'm gonna need smaller details. So I'm gonna do a size in properties tab. Minimum size is 8%. Gonna set that temporary to 2. And now that it has this like number 1, now I know that which is the temporary copy, so I can get rid of this brush after I'm done. You just entered the live, everything is fine, nothing is burning, <laughs> as far as I'm aware of. There's also some uh, fringe pixels on this bag that I need to get rid of. I think for this it's easier to isolate. This way it's pretty easy to see what needs to be erased. I'm pretty sure that the reason why the stream sometimes uh, cut off during this whole thing is just because of the resolution and I think it's a YouTube server thing for uploads because I have the fastest internet that money can buy in this address. So I'm pretty sure that that's not the problem. But 
YouTube probably has its like peak hours and for that reason. But it's weird that it would just like cut the stream and not drop the resolution because I would think that would be a better way to do it for YouTube considering the, just the user experience from the viewer's perspective. By the way, I, I'm not sure if I can like cram in that last bit in my next video when I say that I highly recommend doing this outside painting thing with the iPad because when it's summer you can go pretty much anywhere and paint. It's a huge hassle to carry around oil paints for plain air painting, but iPad like takes literally no space. It doesn't weigh a ton and it's really easy to put away. You don't have wet paints to take care of. I mean, I've done plain air painting with oils and it's just... I love painting with oils, but I hate all the logistics and cleaning up with it. Like, especially for me, I think the deal breaker when it comes to digital painting is like washing the brushes. The brushes are quite expensive. Right now, all of my oil paint brushes are quite cheap. It's because washing them properly can take up to an hour if you do it in a way that doesn't like harm the brush in the long run. Also, it's very bad for your hands if you keep doing it for years and years. But with this iPad, I can just have it there and start painting right away. So it's all of the fun stuff about painting and none of the boring logistics. Sarah, what's happening? I just joined. Uh, painting is happening. Now everything seems to be fine. But we are like two hours into this, so I should be further along, I think, in this painting. This is the type of detail that doesn't really add a lot to the visual impact. I just like every area that has color to be painted in and not just like a color fill because it looks like low calorie paint strokes. It doesn't really give the eye anything to hold on to. But now it does. I think it's better.
Do you have any reference for this drawing? Uh, no. I haven't seen tags running around the airport, besides in my other painting that has kind of the same theme. I think it's called Keep Calm, Carry On. Luggage, maybe. <laughs> that I, I don't remember exactly, but it sounds like the type of pun that I would make out of this. One thing that I cannot not paint is the chain. It's so important to this piece. I wonder what it should be like. Maybe it's part of this bag, like blue. Oh, this track. I used it, this song in the video about Brazilian forest fires. I'm surprised that I didn't get more hate for that. But I guess that I was nobody on YouTube, so nobody cares. So th those are the like fun things that you can do when you don't have any subscribers. This just makes it a little bit thicker. And now when I do an additive layer, it should be clearly visible. Okay, <laughs> two hours and six minutes. Well, considering everything, it's okay. <laughs> it's it's not like a burning disaster. Also, thank you for like letting me know that the sound was too uh, quiet. I wouldn't know that because I can't hear myself speak through this. Ever since I saw your refle reflective house art piece, I have been in so love with reflecting items. Yeah, <laughs> shiny objects are really fun to paint. Also, there's no one saying that you can't do that as much as you like. I think it's really important to notice when you actually like doing something. Uh, I think like is a much harder uh, 
intend to notice because we are so built to want things we want to be like a certain type of an artist or we want to have these certain milestones for our goals but when we are actually doing something and we like doing them that's a much like quieter noise to hear but it's much more important because then you are kind of doing something that is like your I believe your real purpose I probably said this already in a previous uh, live stream, but for me, like a big thing was when I posted one of my images, and as a joke, I said that I'm gonna stop ap apologizing for the amount of uh, cypress trees that I have in my paintings because there's no logical reason why there are so many because I like painting them and it was just a joke but it changed everything I noticed that like yeah it doesn't make any sense that I'm not doing something that I actually like doing this is that whole like you should get out of your comfort zone type of BS that people are always trying to sell to artists I don't believe in that at all and ever since that day I have been painting as much cypress trees that I like and nobody's saying that I'm doing too much of them. This is the weird limitation that I was putting on myself. Now that it has a bit more texture in the middle, it like just makes it a bit more visible. I'm also going to make that shadow a bit darker. Here. I think there could be like one more like graphic line on the floor. I'm just not sure what color. Maybe it's a whole lane meant just for these bags. I'm breaking it a bit at the seams because this paint has been worn by the edge probably where people are stepping the most but it's nice that these have bags have their own lane so that people don't accidentally kick them and they can walk to their planes more easily see this is the stuff that is definitely worth <laughs> extra minute of my time <laughs> Now the sign 
I'm gonna put something there. I can't like call this uh, live stream done before there's at least like one element. Maybe I should like grab one of my already existing paintings and just like slap it on that poster behind <laughs> and call it a day. I'm gonna do something that would... I don't know if this is going to work, but this would definitely make my old art teachers slap their foreheads in disbelief. It's such an like an obvious uh, <laughs> composition trick that the characters are kind of like looking to the left, and there's a diagonal to the left, and then there's an actual arrow point to the right, balancing the composition. <laughs> so <laughs> this is art humor. <laughs> I know this is probably like only funny to me. <laughs> I 
I wonder if there's a Charles de Gaulle font here. It's probably not a free font. Looks like there isn't. Or wait, was it there? I want it to be off so that it doesn't focus too much attention. Maybe I can get rid of that box behind. How do you do that shiny st strokes? Juhaina asked. Uh, can you be more specific? Which part? Usually I use additive stuff for everything. And yes, this coffee is two hours old, so it's cold. I'm using a selection to just pull this in direction to get rid of the texture. The same reason why I did that. I'm okay with a bit of like hand drawn effect on this, just because the rest of the painting is completely hand painted, so I'm not too worried about texture showing through on this.
I want this to seem like there's like a row of lights illuminating this sign. But it's not distributing evenly. Okay. <laughs> it's looking better. Hey, thank you, Marks. Quentin is asking artists here, which screen protector do you recommend for drawing on iPad if using one? Thank you. Everybody probably knows that I don't recommend using one, but you do what you want to do. That sounds worrying if it needs changing because it's so expensive. Per sheet of plastic. I just don't like the friction. It makes painting less enjoyable for me. But I'm not pushing my own opinions. <laughs> I just think that sometimes there's this... Uh, I don't know. People think that it's going to make them better at something. If 
it was cheaper, I would just recommend to everybody that like just try it and see if you like it. Uh, but if you don't, like then just drop it. But because it's so expensive, it's hard to recommend buying a sheet of plastic for that reason only. Okay, this I'm gonna put on top of everything. I want it to be like very low opacity layer, but something that kind of like ties everything together. I'm gonna try it in bigger scale. Usually when having this sort of like gradient just kind of covers everything a little bit. It just gives it a bit more cohesion. When I started painting with my first vacuum, and it wasn't a Cintiq like the one on the floor behind me, um, back then I felt like the lack of friction was a huge disadvantage for me, so I understand why some people feel the need for these um, screen protectors. I think it's a very personal thing. What type of feel you like the painting process to have. I feel like this fancy bag is the kind that once you accidentally drop it to the floor, it's completely done. Some useless material like suede or something. Mikko. How can I improve my painting? I assume that it's that is blending without using the smudge tool. Don't use the smudge tool, honestly. I recommend it. If you are a person that just started painting this year, I recommend that you don't use the smudge tool for the next five years. I'm serious. I have absolutely zero faith zero faith that anybody actually follows this advice, but it's the best advice that I can give on this topic. 
I think the people of Angry Airline are very understanding and they are going to wait for these two. I can't imagine somebody just like taking off knowing that luggage like this is battling around the airport. Mikko, have you tried Art Studio Pro or any other apps on the iPad? Thoughts? I think I tried Art Studio. I have also tried that Autodesk application, which I think is pretty good. Um, one thing that I have to say that if I wasn't using Procreate, uh, the application that I would choose as my second best option would be Clip Paint Studio, definitely, because I really like drawing. Uh, in Clip Paint Studio. like it when my luggage has all of these like tapes from the trip but unfortunately these days I have realized that I need to take them off otherwise it might give like misleading information to the package handling so your bag might end up in a different continent than you are yourself not great this bag, this sort of like pre-marked tape that you get when you check in your luggage, but the other, the hand bag will not get the same thing. That's because this bigger bag is the guardian of this hand bag. So it's responsible for both of them making on this flight. People keep asking me about this, like Pune Dev Ibis Paint X 
but I've never tried it. I haven't even seen it on the App Store. But I'm just curious that like, why do you think that, because I can paint the stuff that I want to paint, why should I keep trying different painting programs? I want to use that sort of like education energy on myself. I would rather just learn more 3D because that gives me more like visual possibilities of what I can express with my art. But just learning a different painting app doesn't really give me that much benefit for the time invested. Also, there's the price issue too. And also remember that I do have Photoshop. So if I need to do like some graphic design stuff, I will just like boot up Illustrator or Photoshop for those assignments. Johanna Zubair is asking, is usually the final painting is always the same as what you imagined or much nicer? Uh, it's different and it's real. That's more important than what I had imagined, that the painting that I finish is one that exists. That is what matters to me, that it's done. A great idea doesn't mean anything if it's not done. Okay, that's the tag. Maybe it should have like some kind of a barcode. That could get really uh, noisy. But apparently I'm going to try it, it seems. <laughs> Okay, it's fine. It explains it a much, much, in a much better way. Um, Eddie van der Leer is asking, I wonder if the pink one goes in the overhead compartment. I think this is a good question. I definitely think that it looks like it will fit into the overhead compartment. Will it want to go into the overhead department is a completely different matter and I think the answer to that second question is no.
I think these masks are breathing through the fabric already, so I think they are okay without masks. I don't want the bottom of this bag to be the same color everywhere, so I'm painting a bit of like hue variation to it. Just so that the eye is moving through the surface. And I think I have a time for a quick flip. Okay, it's almost three hours already. Uh, I think I'm completely slipping away from like any sort of like format when it comes to these live streams. It's just like a complete dis <laughs> chaos. Oh, this is also a song that I used previously in one of my videos. It's the pinata one. Where do these little guys plan on visiting or going? I don't know if they are traveling with somebody or if they are just on their own. Maybe it's their off day from like luggage duties. It would be the reason why the bigger luggage is the Guardian in this case.
now we are at the point of the painting when I'm doing stuff that can be even like seen in lower resolutions and this is stuff that I definitely shouldn't encourage or do myself <laughs> but it's making the form seem a bit more physical Okay, I'm gonna define these tickets because it, it's bothering me that like they're so smushy. Probably they have been through a lot at this stage, but still. I want them to seem a bit more like... non-torn. Let's get these two edges harder. So they weren't coming through the form, so the thing that I like about doing character design like this is that once you get to this stage it feels like you have created yourself some like new friends <laughs> that didn't exist earlier. I think that's always something that makes me really happy. I know it sounds silly but now if I do another painting I can use the same characters if I want and just explore what they are doing with their life. I guess that's also why I like painting so many characters that are smiling. Since it just has this smile has this effect that when you see somebody smiling it kind of makes you smile too. And it doesn't really matter if it's not an actual human being. If you see a smiling dog you will probably start smiling or a suitcase.
Okay. Thanks, Kevin. I think I'm about done. I'm gonna do a quick canvas flip and see how that looks. I think the eye could be higher on this. I'm lucky that there wasn't anything more plastic. This eye could have a small tweak. I'm gonna isolate it. Eyebrow reminds me of those Thai Quad Drum games. Thank you, Stuart. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining in. Sorry about the lost connection of the Apple Pencil at one point. But I'm pretty happy with this painting. I mean, it, it was nice to go to the airport, even if in this form. And I will like put something like very low contrast on that poster in the background, but it's not going to make that big of a difference. And thank you for everybody who stuck through all the chaos of this live stream. And I will see you uh, in the next video. The next one is going to be that kind of like vlog type plain air video. It's a bit different than my normal ones. So I'm excited to see what you think about that. And I still have some editing to do, so I'll get to it. And then I have a freelance job that I need to get done. So a lot of stuff. Uh, have a great day, people. I'm going to try and see how to stop the stream. <laughs> okay, bye.